Hi all, let's take a look at the 4.8 Achieve assignment. You'll see I just have my worksheet and calculator here open just because I didn't want to go back and forth from the uh, Achieve website to this page with having to do the calculator instructions as well. I imagine the most difficult part of this section will probably be uh, making sure your calculator can give you what it needs to be. We know that Newton's method is a recursive technique telling you that each successive guess of a root of any equation set equal to zero is equal to your previous guess minus the function evaluated at your previous guess divided by the derivative evaluated at your previous guess. And so with this recursive method, it should uh, converge to be uh, the, the roots that we're looking for in each of these problems. Uh, the first problem here, we have f of x is equal to x squared minus 11, and it's telling us to use 3 as our original guess. Okay, well, clearly, the first derivative is simply 2x. Now, Newton's method would tell us that each successive guess is the previous guess minus the function evaluated at the previous guess divided by the derivative evaluated at the previous guess. Okay, well, my original guess here is three. So I'm just going to go to my calculator and make sure that my calculator thinks the current answer is three. So I just say three enter. So it's thinking of the answer as three. Now I'm going to store that answer in as an X variable. And now I want to type in my equation for Newton's method. So I'll go alpha decimal that brings up the colon and it enables you now to type in your Newton's method. Well, Newton's method is just going to be X minus and then I'll have the fraction. I'll hit alpha Y equals fraction. And I'll have X squared minus 11 X to the second. Oops, minus 11. And then in our denominator, we just have 2x, where our initial value of x is 3. And then we need it to change for each successive guess. So I can say, all right, well, my original guess was 3. What's my first refined guess when I plug 3 into this equation? Uh, now, my calculator's in uh, a mode where it's going to give me fractions. So let's make sure I put it in the mode where I get the decimals, especially since achieve wants it uh, to six decimal places in most problems. Not that it's, I mean, we know 10 thirds is 3.3 repeating, uh, but I'll make sure it's in decimal mode. Now I go back and it should give me the answers I, I want from now on. So I'm okay with just thinking, I know 10 over three, that's gonna be my 3.3 repeating. Of course, I'd have to enter 3.3 uh, six, six threes after the decimal on achieve to be correct to their six decimal places. The next one uh, for my second refined guess, I'll say, I uh, know it shouldn't give me a debt. I mean, a fraction anymore. It should give me a decimal. What it's doing, the way I have this set up is it's going to take this answer now stored in for X and then plug it into that function. Well, now I can see my answer is 3.316 repeating. So on achieve, it would be 3.316667 to six decimal places. Uh, and then for my third refined guess, I'll take this answer, plug it into the function. So take that answer, plug it into the function. And you can see I'll get 3.316625. Now this should be a very accurate answer because I can see the first four decimal places all exactly agreed. And then it's just a matter of whether the fifth and sixth are 67 or 25. I know this is closer than that is. Uh, I could keep on going, but Achieve asked me to stop at the third guess uh, just for in uh, uh, my curiosity's sake. What if I did do a fourth guess? I bet it's not very much different and it's not. Uh, in fact, it's the same to eight decimal places all the way on out. So now I can say, okay, this gives me everything that achieve will want to six decimal places for each one. Newton's method, you're gonna take that original guess, plug it into the uh, recursive formula for Newton's method, where you're going to, going to say that guess minus the function evaluated at that guess divided by the derivative evaluated at that guess. And it's going to allow you 
in most cases to converge to an answer. Now, in all of the cases of the problems that achieve gives us. Uh, but I did show you in the notes sometimes when Newton's method uh, does fail. Uh, we look at the second problem here. You're going to have something like x cubed minus 22. For mine, it again told me to use three as my original guess. Uh, well, the derivative here is easy, just 3x squared. So my Newton's method is going to say each successive guess should be the previous guess minus the function evaluated at the previous guess divided by the derivative evaluated at the previous guess. Uh, so now with using three as my original guess, I put three in as an answer and then I'll bring in Newton's method. I'll take that answer, I'll store it in for x and then hit colon. Now type in Newton's method. For this problem, it's going to be x minus the fraction. And in that fraction, I know my numerator is x to the third uh, minus 22. My denominator here is 3x to the second. I uh, have Newton's method typed in uh, with my original guess of three. What's my first refined guess? It better be 2.814815. Beautiful. I get my 2.814815 rounded to six decimal places. Now, my calculator is going to take this entire answer, plug it in for the next one, which is good. That means I'll get my next answer clearly to six decimal place accuracy because I don't want to use a rounded error to find a yet another answer. So I'm plugging all of that into Newton's method. My second refined guess is going to be 2.8029, or sorry, 2097 to six decimal places. And I can see, okay, um, I, it only differed by approximately one one hundredth there. I'm expecting the next time to differ by less than one one thousandth. Uh, if I try that, I go in and I check, and I can see 2.802039, it differed by way less than one one thousandth. It agrees all the way out to, well, it's arguable. You really doesn't agree to the fourth decimal place because this would round up to one where this does not. But there's no question to six decimal places what Achieve is wanting for the third uh, successive guess uh, is 2.802039. Now, again, out of curiosity, I wonder how much the fourth guess would change. Probably not much. And in fact, you can see uh, why they're having a stop at the third refined guess because the fourth refined guess to six decimal places does not change. Uh, now, if I look at number three, it gets me into a trigonometric problem uh, where I have f of x is equal to cosine x minus 8x. Uh, unlike the others where I might be able to solve them algebraically with polynomial functions, I couldn't solve this one. Uh, I don't know when cosine x minus 8x is equal to zero. That's, that would be very difficult to solve for. Uh, now, they're, they're telling us to use an initial guess of one, so we're thinking, okay, the answer is probably somewhere around one, and that kind of makes sense because you know that the cosine function evaluated at one radian uh, would be, uh, well, it's approximately about 0.6, uh, and then minus eight times one, that's going to give me a negative seven point something, uh, so I know it's at least close to the x-axis. Uh, it's, uh, I know that the answer has to be less than one just because I want to subtract off less than eight here in order for this to be equal to zero. But going on into the problem, I can just say, well, all right, the derivative. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. Derivative of minus eight X is minus eight. So now Newton's method says each, uh, each next guess is the previous guess minus the function evaluated at the previous guess divided by the derivative evaluated at the previous guess. So now I can just say, well, my original guess is one. So the first refined guess would be the cosine of one minus eight times one over negative sine evaluated at one minus eight. I should be able to evaluate that, no problem. I'll go into my calculator, I get a one in as an answer. And then I'll say, okay, now I'll store that answer in as X. I'll hit colon and then type in Newton's method for this problem. X minus the 
fraction cosine x minus 8x. Now, ooh, I need to make sure I'm doing something here. Anytime you're using problems in this section, uh, that's cosine and sine, your calculator must be in radian mode. And whoo, I was in degree mode, that would have thrown off my answer. So I had to make sure that was the case. Now that I'm in radian mode, everything will be fine. I'll have the cosine of x close minus 8x, all divided by my negative sine of x. And I'll again, close that out minus 8. Now everything's entered in great. I can evaluate. Boom. So I get my first refined guess as 0.156283 to six decimal places. And then you can say, okay, now you can store that answer in and the calculator makes it super easy because you just hit enter. It's gonna take that answer, plug it into your expression. And we see now it's refined to a guess of 0 0.124103 to six decimal places. You say, okay, it's changing much less than it did initially, so we must be converging on an answer. It changed approximately 0.03. I know the next refined guess should differ by less than 0.003 is my guess, so I'm expecting not much of a change, and notice it doesn't change much. Uh, 0 0.124396, 0 0.124, uh, hmm, oh, 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 uh, because it was 0 0.124039, and then the six rounds the nine up to a 10, which rounds the three up to a four. So that's where I got the 0 0.124040 to six decimal places. So that would be Newton's method for that problem. For number four, again, it's a trig question. Uh, and we have f of x is equal to one minus five x sine x, with an initial guess of x sub zero is seven. Our first derivative, you say, well, we're gonna to have to use the product rule here. So I say, well, the derivative of minus five x is minus five times the second, and then plus minus five x, minus five x times the derivative of second, derivative of sine is cosine. So here is my first derivative. Now, Newton's method is just gonna say, each successive guess is the previous guess minus the function evaluated at the previous guess divided by your derivative evaluated at the previous guess. Now I go in and I find my three successive guesses using my initial guess of seven, which Achieve gave me. So I'll go to my calculator, put seven in as an answer, and then I'll store that answer in as x colon then I type in Newton's method, which we know is going to be x minus the fraction. Once we get the fraction, our numerator is 1 minus 5x sine x. And I get that entered in. And then my denominator will be that negative 5 sine x. And then we have minus 5x cosine x. Once I get that entered in, I'm confident Newton's method is correct. I start hitting enter. My first refined guess from the original guess of seven is 6.258732. Uh, then I can say, okay, now once I enter that in to find the second refined guess, I just hit enter again. I get 6.315376. You enter that in back into your function. And when you do, you're going to get 6.314862. So with the calculator, Newton's method is a very quick and easy man maneuver. I'm just curious, is x sub 4 the same thing as x sub 3? And it is to six decimal places, which that, that must be why Achieve decided to stop at the third successive guess in all of these problems. Uh, now, looking at the remaining problems in this section. Uh, number five actually goes pretty darn easy. It's just the function is the sine of x is equal to zero. We're trying to find one of the roots. And of course, the sine of x is equal to zero at many different places. It's equal to zero at zero, and then any multiple of pi thereafter. 
So I could say, well, I'm trying to find the root of the sine function nearest the initial guess of 18. So I can say, well, okay, I should be able to find that. Now, I'll find that by saying, well, f of x is my function sine of x. f prime of x is its derivative, the cosine of x. So my Newton's method recursive formula should tell me that each successive guess is the previous guess minus the function evaluated at the previous guess divided by the derivative evaluated at the previous guess. Now it's just a matter of plugging it in. You say, no problem. Uh, I'll go in here and say 18 is my answer and then store that answer in for x, alpha decimal for colon, type in Newton's method, x minus the sine of x, and then we're dividing that by the cosine. We could have just did tangent x there. <laughs> x minus sine x divided by cosine x. I forgot to do the fraction key, but that's no problem on this one. It doesn't need it. Uh, so I have sine x divided by cosine x. Boom. My first refined guess, 19.137314, rounded to six decimal places. So I can see it changed quite a bit. It went up 1.1 units there. Uh, so that's a pretty concerning change. Uh, if I try again, whoops, don't hit the decimal. I hit the enter. If I try again, I'm going to get 18.841341 rounded to six decimal places. Now this time it at least changed less, changed about 0.3 units. So the next time ex I'm expecting it to change less than 0.3. 03 units. Let's see. For the third refined guess, I'm getting 18.849556. It certainly did change less. Uh, in fact, it only changed 0.008 units here. And I can say, okay, uh, that's my third refined guess for the root of this sine function. If I just kept on going out of curiosity, the fourth refined guess. Uh, it actually, does it differ? Eight, four, nine, five, it would round to five, six. So to six decimal places, it's the exact same thing. Uh, now, of course, if you're curious, you can just say, well, we know it only has X intercepts at any multiple of pi. So if you divided this answer by pi and just say, oh, it's finding the X intercept at six pi. Uh, up next, uh, for number six here, it's just asking us to find the cube root of 12 or 12 to the one third power. So our equation that I could do there is I can say, well, I'm going to let X equal 12 to the one third. Newton's method has to be a function though that has a non-constant derivative. So uh, I can't just say uh, uh, that X minus 12 uh, to the one third is equal to zero for my function. That's not going to work because its derivative isn't going to have an X to plug it in. So I can say, well, all right, then if I wanted to find a function at which I could work with, then I could go ahead and cube both sides. If I cubed this side, I get X cubed, of course. And if I cube the right hand side, I get a 12. Then I can let f of x be the function set equal to zero that's going to solve this original. And you say, well, f of x is just going to be x cubed minus 12. We set that equal to zero. It'll be the value of x that solves these two scenarios. So that gives me a non-zero or a non-constant derivative. I'll have my 3x squared. And now I'm going to have a function uh, for my function and for my first derivative that, can, that I can always plug these successive guesses into. So Newton's method should work here. And I can say, uh, Achieve told me to guess uh, originally two, and that, that makes sense. We know two cubed is eight. Uh, three cubed's not, uh, I mean, it's not even close to 12. It's all the way up at 27. So we know our answer is closer to two than it is three. And in fact, you can see it right here. But to get to that on your calculator, we'd just say, okay, put two in as an answer, boom. Then we're going to store that answer in as x, colon, alpha decimal. Then you type in your function. Well, my function for Newton's method is going to be x minus the fraction. This time I remembered my fraction button. 
In my numerator, x cubed minus 12 divided by my denominator, which is just 3x squared. And this should allow me to get my three successive guesses. Boom. My first successive guess is 2.3 repeating. On achieve, you'd have to enter 2.63s. Uh, then for my second refined guess, and I can see it's differing by about 0.04 units, uh, 2.290249 to six decimal places. Now, because that differed 0.04, I'm expecting the next one to differ less than 0.04. Is that happening? Oh, it's happening. Uh, you can say, uh, when I do my third refined guess here, 2.2894. So uh, this differed by approximately 0 0.0008 units uh, from uh, 02 to 94 there. Uh, and so I can say, all right, that is my third refined guess. And that's all that achieve is going to want the 2.289429 rounded to six decimal places. Please don't try to enter the whole number in. It won't like that. Uh, if you did want to for fun, try to find uh, what it is exactly. You can just say, well, there's my fourth refined guess, 2.289428. And did that differ? Well, yeah, it did a little bit because that, that was 2.9 and then this is 2.8. And then by the time I do the fifth refined guess, it doesn't differ at all. Or of course you could have just said, well, John, all it is is the cube root of 12. So math four cube root of 12 should match that answer. And of course it does. Uh, but of course, in order to, for you to get the answers that achieve once, you're gonna have to know Newton's method in each step there. Now for the seventh and final problem here, it's similar to problem six. This is a very short uh, achieve assignment. Uh, it's asking us uh, to find the uh, value for 11 to the one third. And unlike the other problems in this section, for mine, it just put one answer blank and it wanted it correct to six decimal places. So uh, in order to do this now, again, you could have cheated on this one and just said, oh, if it wants it to six decimal places, why don't I just hit the cube root of 11 and put that to six decimal places? Because you don't want to be cheap. Uh, even though it doesn't put each of these, you should still be thinking of it. So I won't even uh, do it that other way about taking the cube root of 11. I'll just say, hey, let's do it Newton's method way. If X is equal to 11 to the one third, uh, then I know X cubed is equal to 11. And then I'll, then I'll say um, my function has to be x cubed minus 11. That's what's set equal to zero to solve the original. Derivative yet again is 3x squared. I see my Newton's method here is x minus x cubed minus 11 over 3x squared. Now, I went ahead and let my original guess be two for the same reason as in the last problem. I know eight to the one third is two. And eight is a lot closer to 11 than my next number 27 to the one third would be three. So I know 11 to the one third is much closer to two than it is three. So I let two be my original guess. And then after that, you can see my successive guesses. I'll go ahead and show that here. Two entered in as an answer. And then we store that answer in as X colon, type in Newton's method, X minus your function here f of x, which is x cubed minus 11, x to the third minus 11, all divided by 3x to the second. We get our first refined guess here, 2.25. Then you can say for that second refined guess, and now this time I just showed everything because it wasn't wanting each of the successive guesses to so many decimal places. I was just trying to find the answer correct to six decimal places. So I just wrote everything out. There's my uh, second refined guess. Now, at this point, I know that my error is less than 0.03. Uh, so I'm, I'm sure that this is at least 
something. If I keep on going, I'm not sure something is correct until it repeats. So by the time I get to the third refined guess, I could at least say, well, in that third refined guess, that would round that up to a four. I could say to three decimal places, I am certain it's 2.224. Um, but then after that, not certain at all. I need it to six decimal places. So I can say, I need to keep going. For my fourth refined guess here, I get 2.22398. So it's correct to one, two, three, four, five, six. Gorgeous. Now, the seventh decimal does change, but that's irrelevant because whether it's a zero or whether it's a one to six decimal places, we know it's going to be 2.223980. Uh, and so I could say uh, the 11 to the one third power is approximately 2.223980. Uh, then, of course, if you just said, well, John, you could have just sucked all the fun out of that problem and said the cube root of 11 and boom, got it that way. But yeah, you'd have felt very guilty doing it that way, though. You want to do it the Newton's method way. Ooh. All right. So hopefully uh, this section makes sense to you. It's a pretty simple concept with the aid of a calculator. Uh, you cannot imagine how tedious and difficult this would be if we weren't using the calculator. It really gives me an appreciation of what a brilliant mathematician that Newton was, just his ability to calculate these numbers on out to many decimal places and come up with uh, thoughts like this, just amazing. Uh, but anyway, if you have any questions, let me know. And sadly, this is our last section. So we'll be preparing for uh, the final exam and stuff like that. Uh, be or stay, stay tuned for that information upcoming.